What's up, guys? Here's part two of my uh, football boot collection. As you can see, I have a lot of Puma, some Asics, Umbro, and a little bit of Adidas. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first one is the, what is this again? Under Armour Blur Carbon 3. See carbon fiber wing on the uh, lateral side with the has a carbon fiber spine to it so this is a super rigid sole plate conical studs uh some bladed studs for uh lateral traction kangaroo leather pretty soft uh it has the 40 foam which is like the most cushioned um sole plate i mean insole that i've ever had actually and uh this is pretty comfortable but to be honest, they're pretty light, but the one thing I don't like about them is like this burrito style style tongue. I don't, I'm not a fan of it. I don't really get a good fit out of it, I think. I think the biggest problem is for whatever reason, whenever I get a burrito style tongue, it just, it just doesn't fit well because I think of, I think it rolls like it, it kind of makes my uh, ankle a little bit uncomfortable because of the way that it wraps your foot. So I'm not a big fan, fan of that. But other than that, it's pretty good. One thing to note about the Blur Coming 3 is that you have to go a full size up. So I'm usually a 10 in football boots. But for that, I have to um, take it up to a size 11. Right here is the Puma Evo Speed Fresh Edition. So this is like the just like a mesh edition of the, um, the Evo Speed um, Super Light Edition. This is like the lightest boot that I've ever had in my hands. Kind of a weird sole plate, but this is super light too. Um, haven't really tried it out. Tried it on the feet. It doesn't really fit that well. Um, so I might just end up selling this. I got them for like 60 bucks on Sucker.com, so not that bad of a deal, but yeah, who knows? I might try them out. I might not. I might just sell them. Then we have the Puma King Finale K Leather Edition, which I really like this um this uh, boot. The tongue, there's no uh, Velcro to it, but it doesn't really get in the way. Uh, this K Leather is super soft, actually. To be honest, I think it's softer than the. Copa Mundial, and I have both as you'll see in a minute, but I just honestly think that this K leather is nicer. There you go with that white form stripe. Um, pro tip if you guys want to keep your uh, white stitching looking white for the longest, you should get some um, what is it? The it's like white uh, leather shoe polish and rub it into the uh. To the white stitching, stitching, and it'll kind of help with uh, keeping it looking nicer for longer. Another thing that you want to know if you're looking for the Puma King Finale uh, K leathers is that the regular one, the calf leather ones, it'll have the the Puma Cat on the back heel, but when you get the K leather edition, it'll have the form stripe on it. So that's a dead giveaway of which one that um, a, you know website is selling. If it has the form stripe like this one, this is K Light, the K Leather Edition. If it has the Puma Cat on the back, then that's the Calf Leather Edition. Conical studs, as you, as you can see, these were my main boots before I got the Legend 7, um, just because they were so comfortable. One thing to note too about this is that um, one, the little the insole is not removable, and also the tongue actually has like um, these two um, bands on it for uh, tightness in the midfoot. And I have flat feet. So when I first um, broke these boots in, it kind of messed my uh, my arches a little bit and kind of made it painful, but they eventually broke in. So this is a really comfortable boot. Then we have the Evil Speed, I mean, the Evil Power 1.2, 1, 1 the second generation of the Evil Power. Pretty nice, haven't used it. The reason why is because what happened is as I was trying them on, it's like a little, like a little, I don't know if it's a, a defect or what, 
but there's like a little piece near up here where it kind of irritates my pinky toe so I just can't even really wear these so I might just try and sell these two for me I have to go half size up with Puma um, boots so for all of these these are all ten and a half but I'm usually at ten in most um, football boots the insole to this is super nice it's like um, a poron type insole like what you get from Nike and as you know the adapt light synthetic with the I forgot what this is the I think this is the gradual stability frame the sole plate and it makes the, the shoe super uh, super flexible so that's a good thing about it I think it's a good boot even though I haven't tried it I just wish I could but that one like I guess it's like a manufacturer defect I just can't um, break them in. So now you have these. This is the A6 DS Lite X Fly K Leather Edition. Super nice. This is actually one of the uh, nicer, um, I guess, leather speed boots out there. Back when it was um, an inline model, around, I think it was like around like. 2014 one of those 2014 2015 I have used these these are nice super light sole plate um, kind of rips off the Addy zero a little bit but at the end of the day that's kind of that one piece construction is kind of like the only way you can make a, a a boot super light you have something I really like is the suede uh, the suede heel liner super comfy and it locks your heel in pretty nicely. The only reason why I didn't play in this more is because I just, I don't think the K leather on it is the best quality, isn't as soft as I would like it to be. Because when it comes to K leather, kangaroo leather, I'm kind of a, I guess you could say I'm kind of a leather snob. So like if it's not super, super soft, like kind of what I, um, expect it to be or it isn't live up to like the expectation of like what it looks like on um, on pictures then I kind of get turned off of it a little bit um, one thing I should say like one story or whatever is that I had the Adipure 11 Pro SLs 2 and they were the K leather ones too and the K leather on those wasn't that um, nice either so I ended up just selling those instead of keeping them Looking back, I kind of wish I would have kept them for the collection, but it's whatever. Now, this is the only Umbro boot in my collection. This is the Umbro Geometra Pro 2. This is when, uh, this is a product of when Nike had bought out Umbro. Like, it had own, owned Umbro for a time, so you saw a lot of cleats kind of had Nike technology, except they were kind of ground, I mean, downgraded a little bit. So it wasn't as good as like the Nike products, but still pretty nice, at least in my opinion. So you had suede heel liner, just like on the Asics, super nice. An actual poron insert on on the inside. Let me pull it out for you guys, just to show you how similar it is. Exact poron insert. As you can see, that's something you will find on a Nike um, football boot. And the reason I don't, for whatever reason, it's just another thing of, I just couldn't fit into these. So I didn't really use them to their full potential. So that's why I don't have like a, uh, like a better, uh, nicer things to say about this. As you can see, Kayla is kind of soft, but it is thinner than what I would like. I kind of like a medium thickness uh, leather. So for this, it just wasn't my cup of tea. It's still a good boot. Just, not what I liked. Um, it has this sandpaper as finish to it, and has this gel memory foam. I like the memory foam uh, implementation to it, but I think this plastic thing is kind of what turns me off to it because it, it messes up like the the fit of uh, the boot because. It just doesn't conform to your foot as nicely as it would if it was just like a softer synthetic or a leather. 
So that's another reason why it just didn't um, appeal to me. Soul plate, bladed studs with the little circular thing that they, a lot of people say they kind of ripped it off of the uh, Nike CTR 360. So who knows, might be true, no idea. But this is a really chunky soul plate. I kind of wish the blades was smaller, but I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, I play with, you know, Copas and Finales over there. So, I mean, it, it can't be too heavy. But, yeah, I wish I kind of, um, I wish he's broken a little bit better for me. So, I has like, a nicer thing to say about it. But, um, I don't. So, oh, yeah. This is a synthetic tongue. I just, if I if I get a K-leather um, shoe, either the tongue needs to have uh, memory phone in it. If it's synthetic or it needs to be a leather tongue. This thin synthetic tongue is really bad quality in my opinion. So there you go with that. Then we finally get to my Adidas little collection here, I guess. I had a couple other Adidas um, cleats or boots. I had the Adidas Ace 15.1 in the uh, Solar Red colorway. It was... It, had, it was like a pro version or whatever because it had the sprint frame on it. And I kind of liked it, but the fit of the Ace was way too wide. And I kind of had medium to wide feet anyway, and it was still too wide in my opinion. So I ended up selling those. I had them for a decent long time. I think I sold them like two months ago, and I really liked them. But the fit was just way too wide for me. So anyway, we go to the Addy Pure 2. Really nice kangaroo leather this is the kangaroo leather that i like it's a nice medium thickness you get a whole bunch of it this is a nice like control pad right here just pure kangaroo leather for those that don't know this sign right here this leather stamp that is a sign for genuine leather it doesn't mean that this is k leather it just means that this is a leather product but just so you know, this the, the Addy Pure 2 is a kangaroo leather um, boot. Synthetic stripes. And then we had that burrito style tongue again, which I really don't like. Especially on the Addy Pure 2, it, because I kind of have a wide, um, a wide foot and like a high metatarsal. It doesn't wrap all the way. Like you see how it kind of wraps like that? When you put your foot in it, it won't wrap all the way down like that it'll kind of leave a little gap and depending on what your preference is you may or may not like that i kind of don't really like that but it's still a good boot uh as you can see it has the old traction stud plate or i think this would be called like traction 1.0 which is pretty good i kind of i don't know if i like this more than the the current so place that he used the traction 2.0 but i i think it would go i like this the most then the traction so plate that was on the 2014 addy zeros with the bladed studs again i like that second and then like the conical shaped ones that they use now that would be like my third place for um adidas uh traction plates uh, also a big characteristic of the first four addy pierces that they had a kind of a low heel so you really had to get your sizing right um, to make sure that your heel didn't slip out of the, uh, the the out of the heel over here because a lot of people had a lot of problems with that with the first couple Addy Pures that they their foot would just slip out of the heel because it's such a low um, low cut. So, but yeah, super nice classic look. I did have to go a size half size up on this, so this is a ten and a half instead of a size ten. I don't know if anybody else had to go a size up or if that's just me. Then we have this Addy Pure Three, super nice. When this was around, like when it first came out for the World Cup in two uh, two thousand ten, I got um, the black and orange pair off of Pro Direct for like eighty bucks. And that was my first exposure to kangaroo leather and how good it can be because this is really soft, 
um, whoops, soft, thin kangaroo leather. And uh, yeah, it was just a good experience. I finally got it in the traditional black, white, and gold colorway. Like I said, the heel, if you got your wrong size in, in the heel, it could um, your foot could kind of slide out of it. Oh, another big thing is that me and a bunch of other people as well, as you can see, it says Adipreen, right? So it kind of has like a gel inside the back rather than a traditional, you know, heel liner. But if you take these boots off wrong, like say you like take them off too fast or you don't put them on the correct way with, you know, taking, um, loosening all the laces, that gel will get messed up and it will move up like up the the heel and you'll end up having a bad fit in the heel an even worse fit so if you're buying these just make sure to like you know take care of them otherwise you'll have problems in the heel um as far as like um, lockdown and everything like that but one thing i'm happy about is that from the two to the three they went back to traditional laces um it's still asymmetrical, but it's no longer the burrito style tongue, which I really don't like. So yeah, I think I won't play in this because I already played it, like I said, back in like two, um, 2011, 2010, something like that. So I already experienced this, um, this boot, so I might as well just keep it nice for the collection. Then the last one is the Adidas Copa Mundial. This is like the most classic football boot ever created this will probably stay here for all time um the leather is super soft but like i said i i i still feel like the puma king finale has softer leather on it than on the mundial but that doesn't mean this is bad quality it's really nice quality laces i put different laces in it um these are sr for you laces the traditional ones that came with the Mundial, I still have them, but they're just too long for me. I just I just can't stand super long laces. It's like one of my pet peeves. Um, also, I read reviews where they say you have to go a, a full size down. So instead of a size 10, I went to a size 9. And I kind of regret that because the reason why is because like my right boot it breaks in pretty good it broke in pretty good but the left one for whatever reason my big toe it won't like it won't break in so i still have like a little bit of pain in the toe area but in the right one it's okay so i don't know what's the reason for that it's probably just you know my foot but Based on my experience, I would say go a half size rather than a full size down. Go a half size down. As you can see, conical studs. Yes, I have played in these a few times to try and break them in, but like I just said, it didn't work. I am kind of contemplating on whether to cut the tongue or not, but since I'm not really going to be playing in, you know, in Mooney Owls, I might as well just keep the tongue and just keep them looking like this for the collection. Um, you know, to keep the classic look or whatever. So yeah, that is part two of my um, boot collection, which makes, the, I just showed you my Nike collection and the rest of these. So that makes my whole boot collection at the moment. Uh, I, I think today, yeah, today I, uh, I ordered Superfly 5 and another pair of Nike Temple Legend 7s. Because what my plan is, is that I'm going to wear out the Legend 7s that I showed you in my first boot collection. Those are the ones that I'm going to keep playing in. And when those eventually break, I'm going to send those in for a Nike voucher for $230. And I'm going to use that for another pair of boots. So that way it won't be like a total waste. I can kind of keep re-upping on um, getting boots that way instead of spending my own money. Uh, I might make a video on that on how to do that. But yeah, that's my uh, boot collection. This is a uh, boot banter. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Oh, and also, I, I ordered the uh, the Mizuno Rebula V1 uh, Mark II, the uh, the World Cup red colorway. 
I ordered it off of Saka.com for $215. Uh, it's usually like 300 bucks. And those should be um, releasing in late July. So I should have an unboxing of that either late July or early August. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If the weather gets nicer around here, I'm in Chicago. So if the weather gets nicer, I should be able to get a couple of free kick uh, to, um, videos up there for you guys. So stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. And that's it. This is Boot Banner signing out. See you guys next time.